The following program contains intense depictions of war and disturbing subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. Heavy artillery could be fired into a town. It could be fired into Vicksburg or Atlanta or into Charleston from ships that didn't have to hit you, that didn't have to even explode near you. Its concussion could be felt all the way around you. It could disintegrate people. This was a horrible, horrible weapon which had an immense psychological impact. You had machine guns, artillery, mines, and so it fundamentally changed the, the tactics and strategies that we used by generals. It became an industrial war, and the side that is better able to apply this technology against the enemy is the one that's going to prevail. By the summer of 1863, it became increasingly obvious that the South was very likely to lose the war. Publicly, Confederate President Jefferson Davis urged his soldiers to fight on. That victory was within their grasp. But privately, he wondered if the war hadn't been a huge and very costly mistake. The resources on which our people had relied, the private arms in the hands of citizens, had proved a sad delusion. Our chief difficulty was the want of arms and munitions of war. The South had gone to war without counting the cost. Jefferson Davis's ominous observation would provide little consolation to that 17-year-old Virginia farm boy who had been so eager to enlist in the Confederate cause. This fall, he will no longer be able to harvest his family's crops and bring them to market. Instead, he will be tending an altogether different pasture, having given his life for a cause he barely understood. And in all of his life, he had never traveled more than 40 miles from home.